Mom! I got to tell you something. This is probably the sketchiest, weirdest, and funniest movie I've seen in a long time. I love it. <laughs> the film, uh, Mark, is it's pretty much... Uh, it, it's you, isn't it? It's looking at your past, maybe self-reflexive. I got a sex talk from my mom. There comes a time in every boy's life when he wakes up in a puddle of goo. Goo? Goo. Very sticky, I might add. And I thought to myself, if I was more mentally ill or unhinged, I would probably do what Hippo did. When do you think World War III is going to happen? It's hard to say, dear. You think it might be in my lifetime? I suppose it could. Okay, I need a gun. And so, yeah, this movie is very much a fantasy of my childhood and I think also Kimball's childhood as we both grew up in similar uh, religious households where these things were shunned. And so Hippo's like um, a fever dream of sort of our nightmare family. <laughs> Not only are we talking with the actor, we're also talking with the creature. Well, first of all, yeah, Kimball is, a, I think he identifies as a creature. Mark is also very creature-like. We met and it was like an instant chemistry and electricity of being like, whoa, the, this guy has the same mind I do. And, you know, we we were like, let's put these perverse minds together and let's create our own Frankenstein. And, and his name was Hippo. He's like the Owen Wilson to my Wes Anderson or probably more like uh, Kyle McLaughlin to my David Lynch in the case of Hippo. And that's sort of what we tried to do here was really team up on something from the start and make it uniquely us. How do you find the balance between telling a story that's real, but doesn't kind of go too far? We do want to go too far, actually. That that right. helps us be okay with it. And how I can say it's personal because it's it's from a personal place, but it's not um it's not a one-to-one. -one. The one-to-one -one would be a lot sadder, more boring, um, and not yeah, just it would be a completely different movie. And I, and there are filmmakers who can do that. Um, and I applaud them, but it's not us. Um, we like to take our lives and take the essence of them and then have a lot of fun with it. I like the way you incorporate black and white. One of the impetuses for shooting black and white was this quote Kimball told me. Well, so Orson Welles had this quote, and I'm going to butcher it a little bit, but he had this quote where he said, black and white is the most flattering thing you could shoot for an actor because then you're not paying attention to like the tapestry and the production design behind them, them but instead you're paying attention to um, the actor and the performance as a whole. The, another way it helps Hippo especially is it's it's a very funny movie, but it's it helps make the audience feel awkward because they're like, I don't know if I should laugh or not because this looks it's shot like it's like Hamlet. And and going back to what you said about the black and white, I also love. Um... Uh, he, you know, his hair is dyed blonde in the movie, but it looks white, it looks ghostly. Yeah. There's That's something the ghost. very ghostly and spooky and weird. Yeah, just about like a white haired kid who's like kind of the man of the house. But like, you know, you feel like he could shoot up his school if he wasn't homeschooled. War is a game. Don't be fooled by simulation theory, however. True warrior. If you want to stay in here with me. I liked the uh, narration, Eric Roberts, and sometimes narration is overdone, but I think that it was a nice balance. You, you want it to be additive to the story, and, and that was our goal with that, is yeah, if we're on a budget, it helps. It helps us get through plot points without paying to show them all, but it also gives it that storybook, otherworldly feeling. Um, movies like American Beauty, uh, Amelie, and Vox Lux, were for me big inspirations up in like oh those are movies that like do a voiceover that uh that works and it's not just like a crutch how would you like to inspire people maybe the next group of filmmakers that are coming up i think the production of this movie speaks to it which is just make the movie by any means necessary and put and put your crazy fantasies on the screen are you looking for truth in cinema? You've heard directors say this, like, I, truth in cinema. Yeah, so we are seeking truth, but not in the way of, like, 
oh, that was an honest moment between the characters. It's like, screw honest moment. Like, we want to make a movie that is unlike life. Well, I was reading in the press notes, you call this film a hug to your younger self. Yeah. And if you could look at your younger self and go back as the person you are now, what would you say to that, that young child that struggled with the tumult of living in that family? I would say, like, you're going to be fine. Don't take everything so seriously. Have a little more fun. Laugh more. Yeah, not, not everything's the end of the world. And that's the hippo in me and in Kimball is like, we both totally. catastrophize, I think. And we both, I think, want to tell our younger selves, like, it's fine. You're not going to die today. The aliens aren't coming or you're not going to choke on this piece of chicken, whatever it is. They've arrived. Quick, go get to the nearest closet and I'll go get my crossbow. No, 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 no. The crossbow will never work. You know that. You need the most powerful thing in the world. Well, gentlemen, thank you so much. It was a pleasure watching your film. And I had no, I had n no idea what I was going to be in for. But then there was one point where I just was cracking up. I go, oh, my God. This is off the hook. Anyway, thank you. thank you and best of luck and congratulations on your freshman project. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Let us bear humble witness. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday, dear hippo. Happy birthday to you.